All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please let me know if you have any problem in the text. Uh, first of all, please invite your friends. Uh, not many people know that today I will be online. Uh, today is Sunday, so usually I don't go uh, live. Uh, however, I have some time, so I prefer to spend it in something useful better than, um, you know, nothing. So let us, uh, you know, today discuss something uh, the Muslims always they speak about and they claim that they have it, uh, which is uh, what is called ethic, morality and ethics in Islam. You know, it's very weird and very funny when I hear somebody, he is a Muslim, speaking about, you know, I have no problem with somebody he is born of a Muslim family, but he have an ethic. This is not my issue. Um, and I'm not saying that Muslims, uh, just because they are Muslims, they have no um, no ethic. That's even not the topic. I'm talking about Islam, the cult of Islam. Does it really teach any kind of ethic? Uh, I will show you here the article which is written by the Muslims, and we will go through little by little to see if there is anything there in this article is ethical you see the ethic should start from you when you write the article if you don't have any kind of honesty so how you can teach me about ethic when your article is full of lies you know what i mean if somebody want to teach me about ethic shouldn't he start from himself and be ethical when you write the article about ethic. You see, all of us, we are sinners. And nobody, nobody in this earth is a sinner, including me. So I'm not here to teach you that I am the person of ethic. And you are not. Or, you know, if you are a Muslim listening, this is not even my topic. But it's a shame that you are making a topic, article about ethic, and everything written in this article is far away from the truth. Which means... It is a pure lie. So where is your ethic? You could not even maintain your ethic in an article you are writing. And we will prove it very easy. If we go here, the word morality comes from the Latin words, etc. So it, thank God this does not come from Islam. I, I, I was expecting them to say it's coming from Islam. All right. Let us continue. Islam as a com comprehensive way of life. I love it when the Muslim says Islam as a way of life and compre a comprehensive way of life. What is the way of life, Islam? You know, to go and kill your neighbor because he's a Hindu. Go attack the the the, the Romans so we can get the blonde girls. To attack neighbors and to attack tribes around us and enslave their girls and rape them. What uh, what way of life? What what is the way of life exactly? You as a Muslim is speaking of, and remember here, I'm not talking about a person. I'm talking about Islam as a religion. Let us see how Islam teach really any kind of morality or way of comprehensive way of life. Uh, complete moral system, guys. It's a complete moral system. Hmm. Is it a moral system that if I divorce my wife three times, she cannot get back to me unless she go and she sleep with a new husband? And then that husband, he divorce her. And then because we are very moral people, she can get back to me. Is that ethic? Who in the world respect himself after doing that? Where is the ethic in this? You know, if we go in the Quran, we can find tons of verses in the Quran which is full of shame, disgusting. Let us let us uh, see some of the stories of the ethic of Muhammad. I'm not going to waste your time and the time of others. Let us read something about Muhammad. Uh, 
Aisha, the child wife of Muhammad, let's switch to Arabic. Provide us with very clear proof that Muhammad was very ethical. The Prophet married her when she was six years old. The marriage is totally completed at the age of six. Not as the Muslim they try to say to you, oh, he married her at six, and then he he did she became his wife at the age of six. This is the marriage date. From six to nine, according to Aisha, he used to molest her. At nine, he used or he'd start having real sex with her. At the age of six, she was very small, so he could not obviously put it in. Excuse my language. At the age of nine, Muhammad, he raped, literally, Aisha. And that here, we will see the first behavior or a sign of guy who is qualified to be a prophet of God. At the age of 54, thinking, and forcing the father of a girl to marry his daughter so he can sleep with her and she is six years old and remember six years old in our calendar is five years old in the calendar of muslims which means when they say six years this is not our calendar she is five years old what is the ethic and what muhammad and aisha they share together to be a wife and husband what is the ethic in that? You know, I remember the Muslim, they say to me, uh, do you know how Rebecca in the Bible, what the, what the age she married? Well, show me where the, what the age she married, you idiot liar. Show me. A bunch of garbage talk and you have nothing to say except trying to say something to, to prove to us that Muhammad is not the only idiot of the village. Let us say for the sake of argument, there is somebody else he did marry a child that will make their two idiot and two criminals and two rapists. That will not make them one. So you are not defending your prophet. But in order to defend your prophet, you fabricate lies, which does not exist, just to protect your prophet. Or you see a Muslim saying, do you know what the age of uh, Mar Maryam when she got married from uh, Joseph? You idiot, if this is a true, it's mean your God Allah is a liar. Because according to Islam, Mary, she never married anyone. This is number one. Number two, Mary, she gave birth to Jesus in the Bible and in the Quran when she was a virgin. That means she is already a, a woman because a person, a female who cannot give a birth, that means she is not having her period yet. As simple as that. And if she is having a man, that will be after she gave birth to Jesus. So what is the problem? She did not give a birth when she was a child. Let us say for the sake of argument, Mary, she gave birth to Jesus when she is one day old. One day old. But still, she is not married. <laughs> I mean, stupidity is amazing. So the ethic of Islam, the way of life, start from here. Because now, according to Islam, a man, he have no limit of any age to marry. If the Prophet himself, he marries six years old kid or five years old kid, every Muslim is qualified to have a child and to have sex with. That is the truth. Is that an ethical behavior? A man at the age of what Muhammad he saw in Aisha at the age of five years old, which is six in the Islamic calendar, to make her look like a wife for him. And remember, Muhammad have all the women around him. Like, he's not a guy who's exists in the jungle, and he found only one female. She is Her name is Aisha, and she is five years old. Already he married many times before Aisha. Why he wanted the child? Let me show you the other ethic of Muhammad about sex with the children.
محمد he saw Jabir and Jabir was one of his terrorists you know Muhammad he have a terrorist group now and he attacked the neighbors to steal their money and this is one of the ethic of the Prophet Muhammad that he is a thief he is a caravan rider if you do not know what caravan mean my friend it's mean like you're going from city to city a bunch of pirate or thieves they stop you they take your wallet they kill you they take your jewelry they take your money and they rape your wife this is who is Muhammad and his gang is and this is all written in the Islamic history by Muslims hands printed by Muslims preserved by Muslims so now Jabir and the terrorist Muhammad is coming back from an attack Muhammad he saw him and Jabir obviously he was in rush he want to go home fast so Muhammad became curious why he is rushing to go home why this guy he want to go you know fast home Muhammad need to know he cannot let it go maybe his wife she is good looking so maybe I will sleep with her so he want to know what's wrong with the Jabir why Jabir he want to go home fast they are done and he have the right to go home they killed as many they can and they stole the money and now he got his shares and now he's coming back home but he's in a rush we were with Allah messenger huh in expedition what expedition it says it says what you know an attack we are attacking the neighbors you see they call it expedition <laughs> it's a theft we were stealing the money of the neighbors and now we are coming back I urged my camel to move quickly as it was slow please guys invite your friends as you see we did not inform many people yet that we are here so post it around please so I urged my camel it was as it was moving slowly my camel moved forward like the best that you have ever seen okay as I turned my face I found him to be Allah the messenger of Allah messenger of Allah he said, hey, Jabir, what's hast in you? Muhammad is curious now. He want to know. Jabir, what's up? I said, Messenger of Allah, I am in newly wedded, whereupon he said, is it a virgin that you have married or one previously married? I mean, imagine you see a friend in the street. And the question he asked you about the wife you married is her vagina used or never been used am I being rude guys am I being rude or oh, this is the truth what's your business to to ask the guy if she is virgin or not virgin is about what happened happened to her vagina what is the business of a prophet of God to ask a man is if his wife she have a brand new vagina or it's been used is that the ethic put yourself in the shoes of this man you just met a guy let us say he is a closer friend to you and then he right away he asked you a question to explain to him the situation of the vagina of your wife Hey, is your vagina, your wife's vagina is being like played with before or it's brand new with the wax? Please tell me, please. What? What's your business? What is the business of Muhammad to ask such a question? I know that the way I'm saying things is shocking, but this is how it is. You see people, they read, but they don't see. People they read but they don't understand that this guy is a very filthy person. Look like my microphone is making some noise. Hold on, let us see why. 
what kind of a man he asked such a question now when you hear the reason you will see how filthy he is he is not asking the question for no reason let us see the reason the man he answered he said with one previously married okay now Muhammad he knew the situation of the vagina of the women she obviously she is not virgin which mean there is someone else before him did bing bong and now Muhammad he got the information so now Dr. Muhammad is going to think about the situation hmm previously married uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay what's your name you told me a uh, jabber sir and your wife is a previously married yes sir hmm how old are you I'm uh, like uh, 50 years old sir mm -hmm. how much you weight uh, about 80 kilograms sir okay mm -hmm. Now you idiot! Why you did marry a widow? Shouldn't you marry a child so she is going to be playing with you? Look what he said to him. Why? Why? Why not a young girl so you could play with her? I mean, look at the excuse to marry a child. Look at the ethic of the prophet of God. He is explaining to him why his decision is wrong by marrying a widow what is the wrong in his decision because a woman previously married is not fun according to the ethic of muhammad but a child you see the muslim here they translate it as young girl <laughs> what young girl there it says virgin there it says widow widow and there it says what a well, young girl what young girl it's a child so the ethic the ethic of muhammad is you should listen to him and now this jabber he should be smart and follow the ethic and the way of life of islam you should not marry a widow and you should go and get a child so she can play with you have you ever heard of somebody marrying a human being a child just because he want to play with her that is the ethic They make articles. You see, I do not need to read for you the rest of the article, which is full of lies. Not a single thing in there is about, look, no, no, hold on, hold on. In the article of the Abdul, they say to us that the Quran says that you give money to the needy. You give money to? You give money to the needy. Are you sure? Yes, brother, the verse is in the front of us. Huh? You spend your substance out of love for him, for your kin, for orphans, and for the needies. But where is the money is coming from? It says there. From the expedition, the attack of the neighbors. You see, when they try to present to you that Islam teach ethic, don't you see? We uh, we feed the orphan. He is making orphan. He is not feeding the orphan. And actually, in the Quran, it says, the way to help the orphan is to rape them. They call it marriage. You bring the orphan and you marry them. But this is rape. An orphan, you see, you don't call someone an orphan unless he is a child or she is a child. Is that correct? A man at the age of 20 or 18, you don't call him an orphan. Orphan is a, is a statement or it's a defi definition for a child who have no parents. As simple as that. So how Muslims, they help the orphan? Let us go and see the Quran.
سي ذا قران All right. This is the verse they quote for us, which verse chapter 2, verse 177. But they will not read for us this verse where Muhammad is ordering the Muslims to rape the orphan. Here we go. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمُ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُقْصِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَ فَانْكَحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثَلَاثَ وَرَبَعَ let us read together chapter 4 verse number 3 if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan then go and do the effort not Mary we explained that just yesterday go and do the effort to women of your choice two and three or and four not or four there's no or this false translation okay hold on how I'm going to be justice with the orphan by marrying them or be sleeping with them. What what kind of justice we are talking about? What the orphan have to do with this subject here? Muhammad is speaking about Muslims taking women to bed. Two and the three and four, not or and or and or, which is false translation. So what the orphan relationship to to a person, Muslim, they, they say here it's about marriage. But as you see, it's a it's, yes, it's it's marriage according to Islam, but this is not marriage. It's a sex contract. He did not even use the word marriage. He used the word inkahu, which we showed you many times that this word mean sexual intercourse. So if you cannot be or you are not able to deal justly with the orphan though then go and f2 and 3 and 4 so muhammad is saying to them the justice of islam is we first rape the orphan so a muslim this is why you see the the the, the, the muslim from saudi arabia from kuwait from bahrain they 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 love the war in syria there's a lot of orphan from the muslims families who have no parents children they follow the Quran supposedly now he is going to do the good work for the sake of Allah so what he do he marry a child and he rape her the excuse is I'm helping a child man can't you have a child by giving the orphan a school and shelter for free can't you help us you know a, a child without raping the child Can't you help a child without taking the child to your bed? This is the morality of Muhammad. Where is the morality? Don't ever believe any article written by Abduz. For nothing there is a truthful. I never saw any article written by a Muslim about Islam have even zero percent. Not even I cannot even say the zero. I mean, one of one billion of truth in it. What about Muhammad having fights with his wives and threatening his wives to divorce them and exchange them with what are women who do obey him? Is that the ethic? And why the wives are fighting? Because Muhammad is unjustly dealing with them. He allowed Aisha to take all the gifts and all the wives they take, they take nothing. So they made parties. And they gathered those two parties against Muhammad. Muhammad, as usual, as Aisha, she described him, that your God, he rush into your desire, Muhammad. Well, Aisha, she is not stupid. She is young, yes, but she is smart. Actually, Aisha, she said to Muhammad in one of the hadith, Anta alladhi taz'amu anna ka nabi. You, you are one who claimed to be a prophet. You claim. 
which means you are not. She knew he's not. Let's see if I can find the hadith of Aisha. Uh, let us see. I don't think I will find it in English. Yeah, I don't think I will find it here. But anyway, we can find it in different if in, in the Islamic website in Arabic. Let's find it so the Muslims they will not say I'm making things up as you know, you know them. You know them. I found the hadith already. I'm just trying to find it in official Islamic website, not just a website. All right, let us see here. All right, here we go. This is one of the reference, one of many reference. The book of Ihya Ulum al Din Lil Imam al Ghazali. Al Kitab, the name of the book, Ihya Ulum al Din, Al Mu'allif, the author, Muhammad ibn Muhammad al Ghazali Abu Ahmad. Volume number four. Aisha, she said, and she was angry from him. Anta alladhi taza'ama anna ka nabiyun. You, the one who claimed to be a prophet. Claim to be a prophet. And Aisha, she got him busted in other place because Aisha, she noticed that anytime Muhammad, he is horny, he got a verse from his God about his testicles. Let us see. Allah, he worked for Muhammad. Mm. So you look like maybe you will have difficulty to find the hadith in English. Those hadith are very exposing, but I'm sure they have them somewhere. See. I really, I don't like, uh, I don't like to mention something and you know without giving the reference because you know them let us see here we go Aisha she said I felt jealous okay why she felt jealous because Muhammad is sleeping with all the women in the town I feel jealous of women who offer themselves to Allah messenger have you ever heard of a prophet like this he has 13 wives and yet he made a chapter. He made verses in the Quran saying, any woman she want to give her vagina to me, she is welcome. And now Aisha, she got jealous. This is the ethic of the Prophet. The ethic of the Prophet is, it's not enough I have 13 women. No, I need a verse from Allah. Supposedly Allah is talking, not him. And the verse saying, any woman, doesn't matter who married or single, it doesn't matter. Ibn al-Arabi, he said, one of the privilege of the Prophet that if his eyes fall into a woman, her, her husband, he must divorce her immediately. And here Aisha, she noticed that anytime Muhammad is horny, right away, in the speed of light, 
his God, he made chapters for him to satisfy his sexual needs. So she said to him, Aisha, she said, it seemed to me that your Allah hastens to satisfy your desire, which your sexual desire. You see it? Obviously, the ethic of Muhammad is beyond imagination. He needed more and more women. He didn't have enough. I feel sorry for him. I mean, put yourself in his shoes. He have only 13 wives and hundreds of sex slaves. Poor guy. And by the way, the Muslim, they say to you, the prophet was very, very poor. How in the world he is poor and he have 13 houses and 13 wives and each one of them she had many servants. Do you see how poor he is? And now after all the females he have, he don't have enough. You see, Muhammad actually described Muhammad that she is his she is his favorite dish. Have you ever heard of a man insult his wife more than this? All his wives are dishes, and Aisha is his favorite dish. Imagine you are married to a man. And then he want to speak about how much he favor you. He says, I have many dishes in my restaurant and she is my favorite dish. Is that true, Muslims, or I'm lying? Oh, hold on, let me show it. Because they will say he's lying. Let us see. <laughs> Do you see it? The Prophet said, the superiority of Aisha to others is like the superiority of the thread. It's a kind of a food, an Arabian food, to other kinds of food. Do you see it? Are we lying? All women are dishes, sandwiches. I buy it wherever I wish, but my favorite bite is Aisha. What is the ethic? When the wives of Muhammad, they came to Muhammad and they asked him to be ethical, to be justice. The Quran says that the Quran, the, 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 the stupid Muhammad, you see, he always, he is a hypocrite man. He told them, be justice with your wives. And then in the same chapter, he said, and you will never be justice. This is how hypocrite he is because people start talking about him. You are telling people you to be justice. Look at you. The wives of Muhammad, when they made two parties was because Muhammad is being injustice. Let us see the story. You see, I'm not even showing you. Let us see. I'm trying to find the hadith. Each time you try to find something, it's like mission impossible in those websites. So you have to make a trick. Let us see. Let us try a different quotation. As you see here, the story is in the front of us. The people used to send the present to the prophet on the day of Aisha turn. When when the people they send gifts, they send it only in the day where Muhammad Muhammad had many women. He can sleep with them all of them in the in one night. So everyone, she have a ticket. Today is the day of Aisha. In the day of Aisha, all the gifts of the Arabian Peninsula come to the house of Aisha. People, they wait until Muhammad, the child molester in the house of Aisha, and then they bring the gifts. Why? Anyone knows why? 
Anyone knows why? Who knows why? Why they bring it only in the day of Aisha? There, there must be a reason. Muhammad had many wives. Why those people, they wait, they hold their gifts until it is the day of Aisha? Because she is the most beloved dish for Muhammad. So you have a request, you bring the gift to Aisha, you give it to her. Aisha, she goes sit in his lap, kiss him a few kisses, she fool him, and he make him agree about anything she wish. So people, they hold, it's a bribe. Actually, why even Muhammad getting gifts from the Muslim? They say to you, the Prophet is poor. I mean, look at the people, they are coming, but what gift? Why he is receiving all those gifts? And this story here proving that Muhammad is a bribe man. He do what Aisha she want in the day of Aisha because the gift they come to the house of Aisha, and now Aisha she have two voice. It's her voice and her father voice. So she can talk to her father, who is a very important person in the cult of Islam, Abu Bakr. So people, they knew how big the influence of Abu Bakr and his daughter, which is the favorite dish of the Prophet. So what they do? They hold their gifts until she is the one is hosting Muhammad in her lap. So the wives of Muhammad, they complain to Muhammad really carefully. So the gifts is coming only in the day of Aisha. Aisha said, my com companions, i.e. the other wives of the Prophet, gathered in the house of Ummu Salama and said, O oh, Ummu Salama, by Allah, the people choose to send present on the day of Aisha turns. We too love the good i.e. the present etc as Aisha does I mean this is not fair we are his wives too so why the gifts all of them they go there where's justice why Muhammad even even if he received them there why he don't send those gifts to every woman so she can get her shares no the gifts stay in the house of Aisha they live and they die in the house of Aisha not even a single gift will go out So now they met together all the wives, Democrat and Republic, and they decide to ask one of the women of Muhammad to go and talk to him. You should tell Allah Apostle to tell the people to send their present to him whenever he may be. I mean, that's fair. Whatever gift come at the time they come, okay, stay there. He is in the house of Hafsa, he is in the house of Musalama, is in the house, etc. Wherever he is, okay, the gifts stay there. No. So this is the request, and the request is, a, is, is about being justice. Look what happened. Or whatever his turn may be. Um Musalama said that to the Prophet. And he turned away from her, he ignored her. It's like she is saying nothing. And when the Prophet turned, to her, i.e. Um Musalama, she repeated the same. She is repeating the same. Please, I mean, uh, let the gift go to everybody. It's not fair. Why the gifts only go to Aisha? That is not fair. He ignored her again. And the Prophet again turned away. And when she told him the same for the third time, the Prophet, he cannot take it no more now. This is the third time. She is repeating the same request. He said, Oh, Ummu Salama, don't trouble me. Don't trouble me by harming Aisha for Allah, for by Allah. The divine inspiration never come to me while I was in a clothes of any woman. Or here a blanket of any woman, blanket. Except her. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So what that have to do, let us say this is true. Muhammad, he receive. Allah speak to him only when he entered the blanket of Aisha. Obviously, the blanket of Aisha is a blessed blanket and her panty is making the bed blessed by Allah. 
why if you are dealing justly with the wives that will hurt Aisha and what this had to do with the inspiration of God and what do you mean you never receive inspiration except in the blanket of Aisha what about the blanket of Khadija Muhammad he received sorry he married Aisha almost three years after the death of Khadija so for three years you were not receiving anything What is the ethic? Yeah, actually, in different hadith, it says it clearly, fi thawbin, ghayra thawbi Aisha, in any dress except the clothes of Aisha. All right. Here we go. Here he said, this is here when they send the daughter this is the story continue the the women they keep sending people to speak to him so Muslim she went there and then after that they called Fatima which is the not a true daughter of Muhammad Muhammad have no children the Muslim they say to you Muhammad have children Muhammad never have a children Fatima is not his daughter Fatima the daughter of they, they called Fatima the daughter of Muhammad from his first wife but this is not his daughter as we said And they sent her to Allah Apostle to say to him, look what they want to say to him. Your wives request you to treat them and the daughter of Abu Bakr in equal terms. I mean, is that fair, guys? Is that fair? They are not asking something special. The wives, they send me. I am your daughter. They send me to you to tell you. Can you please treat them in equal term with Aisha what Muhammad then said then Fatima conveyed the message to him the Prophet said oh my daughter don't you love whom I love okay she replied in affirmative and re returned and told them the situation so he did not say anything he said don't you love what I love she got it. That's the, he, he want Aisha. He don't want the rest. Forget about them. Then the women, they requested her to go again. The women, they are not giving up. They are very upset. They requested her to go again and talk to him. Read carefully with me. They requested her to go to him again, but she refused. Then they sent Zainab ibn Tujash. This is the wife which Muhammad he kidnapped from his own son. He forced the son to divorce his wife in order to sleep with her actually he was sleeping with her already even the, the islamic book says muhammad he went to the house of zainab when she was married to his own son during the marriage time and he flirted with her and he said praise be to allah the one who made my heart flirt with you or let's say fear in love with you what is the ethic the muslim they say islam is about ethic a man he go to visit a man he is his adopted son not only just a man and he's a muslim man the wife was alone when the husband was away the prophet of god he flirted with the women while the husband is away with loud voice to make her hear it saying praise be to allah the one who made my heart flip for you you see the ethic so now they decide to send zainab because they knew zainab he liked her very much too that's why he forced his son to divorce her. They're trying to find a solution. They send to Musalama, they send uh, his daughter. Now they are sending Zainab, who went to him and used harsh words saying, your wives request you to treat them and the daughter of Abu Qudafa on equal term. Abu Qudafa is Abu Bakr, is the same name. On that, she raised her voice and abused Aisha to her face. This means that the conversation happened in front of Aisha. So much that, so that Allah, Apostle, look at Aisha. Look, look at the filthy man. He did not say anything. He looked at Aisha waiting for her to, do, to make a fight. So Muhammad, he looked at Aisha to see whether she would retort. Look at the donkey. 
Aisha started replying to Zainab. Yes, yeah, stupid, you whore, you filthy, you donkey, you son of etc. Your mother is etc. You know, you are a stupid, you are filthy, you have your head is full of flies, blah blah blah. You know, Arabian women fight. She until she silenced her. Do you see what it says? They did not tell us what she said. Obviously, something really big. She keep attacking her until she silenced her. The prophet looked at Aisha and said, She is really the daughter of Abu Bakr, which means she is filthy the same as her father. <laughs> is that the ethic, Muslims? So you make for us a speech about ethic and the ethic of Islam, and this is your prophet ethic? Women, his wives, they are. If he cannot be ethical inside his house, how he can be justice with others? Is that justice that you give all the gifts to one woman because you like her more than the rest? I'm not going to read for you the theft, the crimes, the killing, the rape, the torture, putting nails in the eyes of people, cutting their hands and their feet to tell him where is the jewelry? Where you have a jewelry? Where you have your jewelry? Tell me. They kidnap a man and they, they beat him until he die to tell him to tell them where is the jewelry? What is the jewels you have? And he's a Jewish man. That is the ethic of the Prophet. I remember when the Muslims they were talking about the ethic of the American army in uh, uh, in uh, Abu Ghraib. You remember Abu Ghraib? The Muslims and the media, they made a big deal because somebody, he put water on the Abdul and they are scaring them with dogs, etc. Which is something really is not ethical according to what I understand. But what Muhammad will do if he was there? Muhammad, he put nails in the eyes of those people. He crucified them. He cut their, cut their hands. He cut their feet. He made them bleed. Crucified. Torturing them. We cannot compare what Abu Ghraib is and what Muhammad and Muslims did. Muhammad, he slaughtered 900 Jews. After they agreed to give up their weapon. Stupid Jews. They trusted this filthy man. Let me see if I can find the hadith in English just to show you a little bit of the ethic of Muhammad, how he tortured a man just to steal his money. No, we cannot find it here. However, the hadith is just in the front of me. It's in the front of us. Here it says that they got this guy. He is from the from the Jews. He, he, uh, he got the guy, his name, Kunana ibn Rabia, and he questioned him, "Where is your treasure?" This guy obviously is a rich man. Where is your treasure? The man he refused to tell them. Then the men, the Muslim, they said to Muhammad, "We found him walking around an an area which is like abandoned. There is nobody, like a old house, which nobody there." So Muhammad, he told them. Uh, uh, and, and this is be, this is before they kidnap him. By the way, the Muslim of Muhammad, the the men of Muhammad, the gang, they told him, you know what? We saw this guy. He is going around this house. Maybe he's hiding his money there. So Muhammad, he said to them, if you are, if you see him, let me know. And the man who reported that to Muhammad, he said to him, I wrote, I saw him every day. Every day in that place, what he's doing there, it's a it's an abandoned place. Then Muhammad he said to this man, Do you know what? If we found that you have really the treasure, we will kill you. What's wrong with you? Why you want to kill him? This is a treasure, this is his money. The man he said, Okay, what he can do. So the prophet he ordered to go and dig. 
in that place and then he found there a treasure but he found some Muhammad there is something missing he said there is more should be more what is this you cannot be all of this so he asked him what is the rest the man it says here for Abba and you, uh, you, uh, you, you, you the, which means he, he he refused to give the rest of the money but this is his money so the Prophet order uh, as Zubair ibn Awam another gang of his men to torture him until he say what he have and get his treasure and as Zubair he used to put his sword or his knife in the chest of the man until almost he killed him but Muhammad he want to get the, the where is the rest of the money and then Muhammad he found that as Zubair he could not make it happen so he sent him to someone his name is Muhammad ibn uh, Maslama and that guy he cut his head and this is from the book of Asira and Nabawiya very number four the title uh, uh, name uh, uh, the uh, like mentioning the attack of Khaybar in the in the month of Muharram in this in the year seven or seven year or the seventh year that is Islam and this is the ethic of Muhammad even the Muslims accused Muhammad that he was a thief and he stole an underwear have you ever heard of a followers of a prophet they accuse their prophet that he is an underwear thief what kind of religion what kind of people they do that what kind of companion he have and by the way the the clothes he stole it is a stolen clothes which mean they attack people and they kill them and they took their clothes and now they are fighting who stole the underwear accusing Muhammad that he must be the one he did that if we go in the Quran in chapter 3 verse 161 let us go there And remember, the one is explaining there is the Muslims, not me. I have nothing to do with it. This is in their interpretation. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. This is not me speaking. This is not my explanation. When some red velvet cloth went missing on the day of Badr, and some people began, who some people who, some Muslims, began to say ah, perhaps the perhaps the prophet he took it mm, you know him mm, he's a thief he's a scumbag i mean why they assume muhammad took it because he always do that when he's something he sees something he want he like he choose it and he take it even muhammad he made a verse in the quran it says al khumsu lillahi wa rasuluh the fifth of every attack To Allah and His Messenger. Let us see. Here we go. Chapter 8, verse number 41. Muhammad, to guarantee that nobody will take the best of the shares, he have to make a chapter speaking that Allah said that from every attack Muhammad will take the fifth the Muslim and when they explain this verse they say Muhammad did not take yes it says that but he did not take any you are right why he did not take any so why Allah he said that and as you see women they are of his shares not only cloth Sophia herself she was one of his shares many women he kidnapped them and you know out of the booty 
that you may acquire in war the fifth share is assigned to Allah and to the messenger those are the best of the shares one to five one to five is to Allah and one to five is to Muhammad now the Muslim they say no it's one to five for both but you know that Allah does not exist I mean who what you will give Allah some candies you will give Allah underwear you will give Allah women you could not what the fifth to Allah fifth to Allah will go to the, to the pocket of Muhammad and fifth to the pocket of Muhammad that is two to five and if we say it is only one to five to Muhammad and Allah together and Allah does not exist anyway and Muhammad, what Allah he will send the truck to, to load the, the, the money that's mean from every five dollars fifth Muhammad he make one dollar just to make it simple for you to show you how big this thief is if the Muslims stole 100,000 underwear One hundred thousand underwear. All right. What is the shares of Muhammad? Who wanna give me the number? Who wanna give me the number? What is the share of Muhammad from the one hundred thousand underwear? Who wanna give me the? Ah, underwear. Yeah, right. You are right. It's a, it's a wrong. Uh, all right, hold on. Don't worry, Muhammad. He will not. He don't know how to read, so it's okay. One hundred thousand. Let's make a comma here. What happened? Under where? Muhammad alone shares will be. Let us do this. What is the Muhammad share, guys? Who want to tell me what is the shares of Muhammad? Forty thousand underwear. Uh, Muhammad shares is forty thousand underwear. See how poor the man? I mean, come on. From the one hundred thousand, he will get only forty thousand underwear. And this is the ethic of the prophet: booties, underwear. And then the Muslims, his followers, they accuse him of stealing a red velvet piece of a cloth. Look how savage they are. They are not fighting even, even over a jewel. They are fighting over a piece of a cloth. No, he get no, he get 40. Why he why he get a 20? Why he get a 20? My friend, one to five is ten uh, is, uh, from from the one hundred thousand is ten thousand, right? From the five. Is ten thousand? Yeah, but he is getting uh, one to five to him and one five one to five to Allah. <laughs> the fifth of the fifth will be what will be uh, uh, 
20,000 from the 100. Correct? Yeah. Anyway, here you will see the quality of the followers of Muhammad, regardless of the money, how much is going to be. And here we are speaking about underwear because obviously, as you see, they are savage to the point they are accusing their prophet that he stole a stolen booty underwear. Yeah, the fifth for Allah and the fifth for Muhammad. Who is the one who present Allah? Muhammad. Who is the one who present Muhammad? Muhammad. So if it is Muhammad getting two to five, which means that his fifth and the fifth of Allah, that will be 40,000. If it's only meant Muhammad will get his fifth, is the same fifth of Allah, that will make Muhammad getting 20,000. Still, this is a lot of money. Just to make it simple for you, if we say Muhammad, he got only one to five. All right. And let us say the Muslims, they attack and they stole 100,000 piece of gold. 100,000 piece of gold. Okay. Then Muhammad, in this attack, he have 5,000 soldier. You have how many? 5,000 soldier. Every man should get his share in this attack. But Muhammad alone will get one to fifth. How much is the one to fifth from the 100,000? How much is going to be? 20,000 piece of gold. So Muhammad now, he took 20,000 to his pocket. Muhammad all right what is left is what what is left is 80,000 and those 80,000 we are going to divide them into 5,000 men everyone every Muslim his share will be at the end 1.5 dollar 1.5 dollar while muhammad oh sorry no, 15 dollars sorry 15 dollars while muhammad is getting 20000 dollar <laughs> So everyone will get sixteen dollar, while Muhammad getting twenty thousand dollar. You see how poor the prophet. Yeah, sixteen dollars each. Who is the one? Who is the twenty thousand to the pocket of Muhammad is sixteen dollars to the Muslims who die for his sake? Do you see the ethic? I mean, here the ethic is so clear. They are taking the money, stealing the money from people who never attack them. They never have a war with them. Let me show you another ethic. In one of the stories in the Quran, where a man. He said to Muhammad, don't seduce me with women. But what is behind that story? Muhammad, he said, attack the blondie, the yellow people. They call them the blondie. They call them the yellow. Bani al-Asfar, the children of the yellow. Let me show you the story.
Let us see. All those hadith speaking about the same story. This is the book of Asira Halabiya. I just read it from there. Asira Halabiya, but this page is long, very long. Let us see if we can find it from there. Here we go. Let us see what Muhammad he said. Ozu Tabuk, Ternabu, Banat al Asfar. Attack Tabuk. You get the daughters of the blondie. Here we go. Father Rasulullah, Ozu Tabuk, Ternamu, Benil Asfar and Isa Arum. Attack the Tabuk, the city of Tabuk, which was today in the border of Jordan and Saudi Arabia. At that place, there was the first point where the Roman is exist. So Muhammad saying, attack Tabuk, not to spread Islam, not to fight for the sake of Allah. Attack Tabuk so you can get the daughters of the blonde. That is the ethic of Muhammad. We attack a country next to us, we attack the people there, so we can rape their daughters and i make a speech to my men who follow me blindly saying to them let us attack them so we can get the blondie girls don't you want to attack and get the blondie girls huh don't you want a man who was listening he said oh don't tempt us with women man muhammad he called him hypocrite for he refused to be tempted by the blondie girls The man who said to him, don't tempt me with women, he's a hypocrite? <laughs> Imagine if Jesus, forbid me, for you know, for, uh, God forbid, I'm, I'm not saying Jesus, he said, but I'm saying, imagine if the Messiah, the Lord, he say, hey Christians, my followers, let us attack the neighbors to get the blonde diggers. He's not attacking them because they are attacking him. They never attack him. He is the one who prepared an army after he killed all the Christians and the Jews in the Arabian Peninsula. Even the false Christians, which is the cults, he killed everybody. Now it's time to attack the real Christians in the neighboring countries and steal their women and their money. That is the ethic of the Prophet of Islam, which the Muslim they keep talking about day and night. Obviously, Muhammad is very ethical. I mean, who can deny the ethic of Muhammad? By the way, my Skype is open if there's any Abdul wanna call me. But look like they are not. Yesterday I stayed here for eight hours and not even a single Abdul dare to call. Eight hours. Eight hours, not eight minutes. That is the ethic and the lifestyle of the prophet. Child molester, rapist, killer. He took a woman, you know, he killed Sophia family. She was a bride, just married. He killed her husband, her brother, her father. And he made her walk in the top of their bodies. And then in the same day, before even they leave the town, he raped her. He put a tent in the corner of the town and he raped her. That is Islam. What about beating women? What about women? They have no right to witness because they are stupid. 
what about that uh, the Christians they are not equal to Muslims and the Christians are najis this is the ethic what about Christians and Jews and Hindus and Buddhists cannot enter the city of Mecca because we are dirty where is the ethic of Islam what about the law of Islam? It says if a Muslim he killed non-Muslim, he will not be killed for killing non-Muslim. What is the equality? I will show you an example of the stupidity of Muhammad. Muhammad, he come, he heard that the Jews believe in something called eye for an eye. So Muhammad want to practice that in his own understanding. Genius. So he decided to come with his verse claiming that Allah told him that. So he said, in the case of murder, huh? yeah, in the case of murder, free for the free, slave for the slave, and female for the female. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this before? To make it simple for you, if I am a white man and I kill a slave man, you kill my slave man. Slave for a slave. If I am a free man, white man, and I kill a white man, I will be killed for killing a white man. But if I kill a black man, Abed, I will not be killed. You kill a black slave I own. That is the morality and the lifestyles of Islam. All who you believe regarding the murders, the, the punishment for murders, prescribed for you in the matter of murder, the free man for the free man, slave man for the slave man. Okay, what about female? Female for the female. Imagine I kill your wife, you kill my wife. So now we have two victims. Look at the stupidity. Female for the female? Why? She's a chicken? What do you mean female for the female? So if somebody kill a female, we kill his female? That is a little bit. Of the madness and the stupidity of this cult anyway guys I'm not going to hold you for long today is Sunday and I would like you to say uh, I would like to see you staying with your family speaking to them having some time with your children's if you have any uh, Sunday is a blessed day and same as Saturday and we better keep it as a family day but I wanted to answer somebody who sent me this link and I wanted to show everybody that this cult is absolutely have nothing to do with ethic. It's just a garbage, garbage in and garbage out. They can make tons of articles, but none of them is true. And it's very easy to expose them. You do not need to be a genius. You, need, you do not need to be like a, 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 somebody knows everything about Islam or you know a lot about Islam. Islam is very easy to expose. It is the most stupid cult ever. As an example, the ethic of Muhammad that he promised us endless penis. I mean, do you see how ethical he is? He is a prophet of God standing in the stage and saying to us, listen, if you believe to me, believe in me, Allah will give you a penis will never sleep. I mean, who can beat that ethic? Nobody. That is a true ethic. Only prophet of God, the true prophet of God, they will say such a thing. Brothers and sisters, I say to you that no one Allah will admit to paradise, but Allah will marry him to a 72 uh, girls. Two from the Huris and 70 from the inheritance. Inheritance? Yes, inheritance. Allah will take 70, will take 70 prostitutes. You see here, people do not notice what this is about. Those are bad women 
Allah will take them from hell to make them your sex slave because bad women they are usually the, 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 those are the hookers the hookers who they are very beautiful and they have nice vagina and beautiful breast as you see it says in the hadith it says whom will have desirable front passages do you see it those are coming from hell those are expert with sex they are prostitutes so they have nice vagina and they have nice breast beautiful Allah will take them from hell and he will import them to the Abdul in the heaven and then Muhammad he continues saying that and ye he the Muslim his male member will never became soft or lose air I mean, don't you see the ethic? This is this is a, a very ethical teaching. It's a, a, the the penis a dripping ethic. This is the true ethic of the world. People need to read learn this. This is the prophet of God speaking about his heaven. And the Muslim they say to you, this is hadith is daif. Daif is accepted by the way. Even when they say daif is accepted, you can go right now search in in, in YouTube for Sheikh Hamza. And type Sheikh Hamza the Eve hadith you will see he explained to you he said to the Muslims stupid Muslims he said to them by the way these days there's attack on the Eve hadith the Eve hadith did not go funk it pass it pass I'm just quoting him what he said they keep saying to you anything you said to them the Eve the Eve the, but even the the Eve what they call him the Eve it pass Quran is Da'if, Muhammad is Da'if, Muhammad he says I was the most weak person in sex and I invoke my God and he sent me a dish of al kufait a dish of shish kebab, I ate it, I get the power of, power of 40 men. If you want to read more about the morality of Islam, go and get my last book, especially last book, Sex and Allah, volume number one and volume number two. So you can see and get a little example of the filth, madness, stupid religion, which everything in it is about sex. And yet they want to give us speeches about morality. And they speak about, the you know, like the Western women, they are trashy, and the Western women, they are bad, and they sleep around. My friend, Islam is about sleeping around. Islam is a religion of sleeping around. That is the truth. I advise anyone who want to read more, go and search in Amazon.com or Amazon the Germany, or France, whatever. Uh, search my, just type Christian Prince there, you will find the list of my books and feel free. Uh, to get your copy if you like to learn more about the cult it's called Islam this religion is based on deception and this was a main reason for me to name my first book the deception of Allah and the Quran full of verses speaking literally about how Allah deceived people the Muslim they will quote for you a verse from the Bible says that God he sent deceive in his spirit God he allow the devil God he allow the evil spirit God he allow the existence of everybody the bad and the good the Sun will rise over the good and the and the bad God created not shaitan God created an angel in Christianity and he turned by his choice to be a devil God created him to be an angel But we cannot compare anything with this God. It's filthy, it is savage, it is ugly, it's disgusting, it is mad, it is violent, it's full of lies, it's women abuse, child abuse, injustice, all in, 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 in no equality, hate and discrimination to other nations who they are not Muslims, everything you name it. 
Yet nobody speak about morality as much as Muslims. But you go in the Middle East, you cannot find a moral person there. The government is corrupt. The police is corrupt. The judge is corrupt. Everything is corrupt. Even if you want to buy two kilograms of tomatoes, you cannot find a person who is have a little morality to give you really two kilograms of tomatoes. You go in the Middle East, they will not allow you to pick up the tomato. You see, they line them up, the nice, beautiful one in the front. Then, okay, you say to him, I want two kilos. You cannot touch them. He have in the back, which you cannot see, all the damaged one. So he started backing up the case, which is made from, from uh, paper, so you cannot see what is inside. All the damaged one. And then in the top, he will put for you two or three, which look good. You go home, you bought two, th two, two kilograms of tomatoes, you find there's only three or four of them, they are fit to eat. You buy a meat of a cow, you find later it's a meat of a donkey. This is the ethical. The phone company, the employee of the phone company, they go in the street, they cut your line. They cut, they are the one who cut your line. And then after five minutes, the employee, he come to your house, he knock at the door. Hello, is your phone line working? Now you know exactly what happened. He, he cut it off. And you say, oh, let me, let me check. You go to check and you find no it's not working you say well okay make a request for us is going to take maybe a month or two to fix it for you okay don't forget to make a request and then you say please man we can't stay without a phone for two months um you know i don't know i mean what i can do I and mean, we have too many people i mean why i want to go and to do it for you first so you give him some money he fix it for you right away this is the land of morality in the land of morality, everybody have bars on his windows. Why? Because if you leave your window without a bar for one second, they will jump inside the house and steal all your money and your furniture. In the land of morality, women, she cannot walk alone in the street, not in daytime, not in a nighttime in Saudi Arabia. Because this is the land of morality. They will kidnap her, they will rape her. The land and the religion of morality. They speak too much about it, but they never have it. It's a speeches, not a practice. Again, I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again, I hope tomorrow I will be able to do broadcast. Please stay tuned with us. Subscribe to this channel and tell your friends and share our videos. And don't forget to watch the video I posted before this one. I was in France and I have some speech with the Jehovah's Witnesses, which they run away from me. And you, you better watch it and see what happened by yourself. It's just a video before this video. Watch it, share it with your friend, download it, do whatever you want with it. Thank you, guys. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord and Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.